can't hear you, Duncan. What's going on? I'll turn the sound up. Can now. Yep. Yeah, sorry, Miss Smith. Well, well, I've been talking to a. Uh, yep. to what, watching your lips move. Watching your lips move and nothing coming out. Thank you, Councillor Gottwald. <laughs> um, you, you know, good morning, all, and morning, uh, watching live stream. Uh, as I said, it's not a big agenda today, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I'll do acknowledgement of country. I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians on this land and pay my respect to elders both past and present. And I'd also like to extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders present here today. Uh, so we, do we have any apologies? Is everybody on stream? Yes, everybody present. So no apologies. Uh, adoption of the previous minutes. Somebody like to move that way? Council Andrew, any discussion on it? Then I put it all in favour. Those against, carry. Uh, any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. Uh, Councillor Scandrit, you have disappeared. I'm not sure whether you're... Uh, yes, your, your background allows you now to be seen. Um, we move on to the agenda report 6.1 post exhibition Renwick Community Centre fees and charges. And I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Mooney to do the introduction on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning, councillors. Um, councillors, this is the first of um, four reports that have been presented to today's. To today's Finance Committee. Um, the purpose of this report is to seek Council's approval for the adoption of the proposed schedule of foods and charges for the Renwick Community Centre up to the period ending 30 June 2021. Councillors, the proposed schedule of fees and charges was placed on public exhibition for a period of 28 days, closing on the 8th of October 2020. The community was notified through You'll Say Winter Caribbean, the Council's website, and a mail out to 640 Renwick. Renwick landowners. Council received 18 submissions by the close of the exhibition period, seven which specifically related to the proposed fees and charges, which was the subject matter um, of this report and the public exhibition. Um, out of those seven um, submissions, five agreed with the fees and charges and two disagreed with the fees and charges. Councillors, the proposed schedule of fees and charges was developed in line with the fees for the hire of East Barrel Community Centre and Canyon Lee Hall and, and a detailed listing of the proposed fees and charges is presented for your consideration on page six. The recommendation in front of you councillors is that you um, adopt um, or that we seek an adoption of the proposed schedule of fees and charges so that when the facility opens in early 2021, um, that members of the community within the Renwick area and surrounding areas um, have a clear understanding of what the fee structure is in place for the hiring of the facility. Happy to answer any questions you may have, councillors. Any question to Mr. Moon? No questions. Then we have a recommendation on um, uh, on page five. Is somebody prepared to move that recommendation? Councillor move Councillor Whipper, second to Councillor Nelson. Is there any comment to the recommendation? Or, uh, uh, council, uh, is that a question, Council Scandrit, or you're voting? Just voting. Okay. Uh, so if there's no questions, I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour, please raise your card. So that's carried unanimously. Thank you, Councillors. We now move over to page 10, budget review to September 2020. And I'll again, I'll ask Mr. Mooney to introduce this. Thank you, and again, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillors, the second report on today's agenda is the budget review up to the period ending 30 September 2020. The purpose of this report is to inform Council of the results of the budget review undertaken for the period ending 30 September 2020, and to seek approval to make the necessary adjustments to the 2021 budget. 
Council is taking into consideration all adjustments requested as part of the September quarterly review. The projected budget result for the 2021 financial year is a deficit of 78,500. This relates to the performance improvement order issued by the Office of Local Government on the 8th of September 2020. Um, given due consideration for the recommendations in front of you, councillors, um, it is recommended that um, the projected deficit of $78,500 um, be funded through the capital projects reserve, which would then result in council maintaining a balanced budget position, which has been its consistent position um, for, for many years um, now. In terms of the detailed variations, councillors, if I can turn your attention to page 11 of today's agenda. Um, page 11 contains a table which outlines um, all of the major variations which have been um, presented by council staff as part of the September quarterly review. It's important to note, councillors, that um, a number of, or the majority of the variations relate to um, significant um, grant funded projects which council has been successful in securing um, over the past several months. Um, however, it is also important to note that it relates the adjustments within this review relates to the expenditure, which is projected to be outlaid um, up to 30 June 2021. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the whole of life of the grant, as many of these grants will um, sit over a number of financial years, um, but specifically relates to the current financial year. Um, there are a number of capital works adjustments, councillors, as is um, always the case as part of any quarterly review. Um, those adjustments have been outlined within the quarterly budget review statement attachment, um, which has been provided as part of this report. Councillors, the recommendation in front of you um, seeks, a, um, seeks a position where council um, adopts a balanced budget by uh, transferring the 78,500 from the capital projects reserve to, to fund the um, deficit that was identified as part of the quarterly review. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. Any questions from councillors into the relation of, uh, of this report? Councillor Scandrick, then Councillor Nelson, then Councillor Tull. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mooney. Uh, could you just uh, comment on uh, uh, parking um, fine revenue and fine revenue generally um, in the last quarter, please? Mr. Mooney? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, Councillor, can you uh, point me in a specific area of the report that's in front of us today so that I can provide some comment on the area of the report today and that that question relates to, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Manny. Look, uh, I, it's not specific to the report. I'm just interested in the effect of uh, uh, the additional uh, activity in the community down here. I'm not sure if you might like to take the question on notice and uh, come back to us all with a comment on what our parking um, fine revenue has been um, uh, in the, the last, uh, well, th six months, really, but particularly this quarter. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, happy to take that on notice, Councillor. Thank you. I think, Councillor Scandrid, I read in here, and I'm just trying to find it, that there was a reduction in the, uh, in the income stream because of that, but... I take your point and it'll be taken on notice. Any well, other well, we'll hopefully you'll we'll just uh, get that comment with possibly, a, um, you know, last year's figures in it, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Well, uh, that'll be, uh, staff will respond to the question. Uh, Councillor Nelson and Councillor Turlin. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, uh, I would expect that uh, there'll be savings in councillors' expenses, which would uh, offset the deficit amount uh, would be my guess. Uh, I think Mr. Burney might have a comment. Uh, Mr. Burney, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Nelson, correct. Um, historically, there have been um, savings, whether that be through um, the fact that we haven't always expended um, the entire council expenses out allocation. Um, that being said, um, if at a future quarterly review that appears to be the case um, and we're a little bit further throughout the year, um, would be more than willing to come back to you with a revised position on that and to also suggest that any savings from the councillor expense program 
be re-diverted back into the capital projects reserve um, to offset what's in front of us today. If that yeah, we sense. should we should get back to a balanced budget uh, that we always aim for. Thanks, Mr. Mooney. Yes, and I do point out though that there has been a loss of revenue to the council because of the COVID and the uh, bushfire crisis, and our position on subsidising um, the ratepayers, how much it's cost us. But you're right, Councillor Nelson, that should be taken into consideration for a balanced budget. Councillor Tool. Yeah, <clears throat> on page 11, you've got a statement here which says transfer from the risk management reserve. Can you explain what a risk management reserve is? Why is it there? And what does it mean? Okay, thank you. And then through to you, Mr. Mooney. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, good question, Councillor uh, Turman, and happy to respond to that. Um, councillors, approximately five years ago, we established a number of internal uh, reserves which were um, essentially based on good financial management. One of those was a risk management equalisation reserve. Um, that reserve was established on the basis that. Uh, who's, who's got the. Okay. okay, sorry about that, councillors. It's getting a bit of feedback. Um, so I'll pick up where I left. Um, we established a risk management equalisation reserve. Um, essentially, the, the premise that that reserve was established, that we recognised that on a year-to-year -year basis, there were factors which were outside of council's control, which could impact on our insurance premiums. So back in the 2016 financial year, um, we were able to um, realise um, savings over a, a period of 18 months to two years of savings through our insurance premiums. Um, those savings were transferred into that reserve for such an occasion such as this year, where our budget estimates haven't hit the mark in terms of what our increase in insurance premium has been. So effectively, the, the intent and purpose of it, Councillor, is to take the peaks and troughs out of managing our uh, insurance premium so that the budget shock or the budget impact is managed on a year-to-year -year basis. It's, a, from my view, a very sound and um, you know, financially prudent um, approach to take um, with respect to managing your insurance premiums. Uh, Councillor Turland, you are on mute. Then the next statement above it is a increase in premiums, insurance premiums. <laughs> so I don't, that's 200 <coughs> expenses, yes, $148,000 increase in insurance premiums. So how does that, isn't that the same thing? Yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, we had an increase in our, in our insurance premiums, premiums when compared to original budget of $148,000. So we're increasing the estimate and we're offsetting that with a transfer from reserve, which acts as a, um, as a budget adjustment to ensure that that increase has no overall impact on council's budget position. So the two offset each other, Councillor. Councillor Turland, you're on mute graphs that you've got in that page 11, the two don't add up except for the amount of money, 148,000. It would have been nice if we could bring those two together so we understood what the two amounts were and where they came from. And I see on page 24, we actually had 450. Sorry? Councillor, can you repeat that from the beginning? Well, what I'm trying to say, do you want me to turn mine down? Is that a problem? Is that uh, no, no, just, I think... Mr. Mooney is trying to correlate your two okay. statements. So what I'm trying to say on page 11, it's $148,000 for the increase in premium, which is basically the same st statement as the transfer from the uh, management risk management reserve. And the only two that correlates those two together is the amount of money until you've explained to us just then that they are the same same, isn't it? I'll, I'll take that on board, Councillor. Yeah, Sorry? That, if that's your view, correct. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the, the $148,000 transfer from the risk management on the top graph is the same as the increase in premiums, because that's what you just mentioned. Is that correct? That's correct, Councillor. Okay. And on page 24, just for everybody's notice, the risk management reserve is $459,000. But 
there seems to be a different figure in yellow. It's 175,000. Sorry, that's different than the 145, 148,000 here. Councillor Sterling, can you just refer to the page number? We just have he's looking at the reserves. He's looking at the recommended change of the council resolution. There's a figure there for a transfer from the risk management reserve. 175,300. Yeah, the difference with that, yeah, I have to explain that as well, Councillor. So that risk management reserve also contains not only the equalisation component, um, which we use to manage the fees and drops, but we also restrict funds received to council's insurer. Uh, if we perform to a certain standard on a year-to-year -year basis and, and meet certain benchmarks, um, council is able to obtain a rebate or an incentive payment, um, which then allows us to invest that rebate or that incentive payment in um, further um, best practice um, work health and safety initiatives. Um, or insurance initiatives. So as part of this quarterly review, we've also allocated um, additional funding from those rebates towards those programs and initiatives. One yeah. more question. The, in the uh, capital works project over $5 million, we have Council, a statement. A separate, so, sorry, councillor, that isn't a separate report. Um, so if it relates specifically to that or if, it, if it's something which is in this report, I just want to be really what, careful. What, 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 what I'm trying to get at in this, in this review of expenditures and increases in expenditures or uh, costs is I want to know basically where is there any changes to the, the uh, Civic Centre upgrade? Is there any increases in our... Councillor, there's no... Councillor, there is no adjustment reported as part of the September quarterly review in relation to the Civic Centre. None whatsoever. All right, Councillor McLaughlin. You're on, uh, you're on mute, Councillor McLaughlin. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mooney. Um, yeah, my question was um, basically along the lines of Councillor Skirt. Uh, uh, I was going to ask the one about the increase in expenditures, expenditure on our insurance premium. Uh, for a lot of years, we were going the other way on this. I wonder if there's any reason why, um, is this on workers' comp or, or uh, have we got any reason why we've suddenly gone up in premium? Because for years we were going the other way and uh, uh, we were reducing this insurance premium. Uh, fair comment, Mr. Burney. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Council, as you would be more than aware of the uh, natural disasters that have occurred over the past 12 to 18 months, most recently being the bushfires. Um, we were anticipating as a result of the, the devastating bushfires that hit um, the eastern seaboard of New South um, of Australia and to see a significant increase in our um, insurance premiums and our property um, premium is, is one of those areas that's been most impacted. Um, Councillor, it goes without saying that you, you're exactly right. Um, for a period of time there, we did see um, quite a significant um, savings in terms of what we were forecasting for our annual insurance premium cost. Um, but as is the case with any natural disaster, and that's, and we've got to remember as well, councillors, the insur insurance market works on a global level. Um, you know, the insurance that we um, obtain is underwritten, um, you know, by large. Um, insurance brokers um, over in the European market. So any global catastrophe can have um, a flow on effect of impacting premiums. And I dare say even at a personal level, councillors, you'd all be, um, and our community would be experiencing similar increases in their, um, in their insurance premiums. That being said, um, councillors, we always do make sure that we get value out of our premiums as well. And um, that's something that um, we make sure that um, we regularly um, review uh, to make sure that we're getting best value and, and competitive rates for our um, our insurance insurance coverage. Th uh, th thanks for that, Mr. Mooney. Uh, I understand it's mainly property rather than um, uh, uh, workers' comp and things. Uh, thank thanks for that. Appreciate. If it was, if it was workers' comp counsellor, it would be specified as workers' comp. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Goldman. Uh, there's no councillor with us. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on page 11, Richard, if I could just ask, there's down the bottom, the SES contribution increase mm -hmm. uh, and the fire and rescue uh, contribution increase. Could you just um, give a little bit of an explanation around those increases? For you, Mr. Mayor, happy to do so, Councillor Whipper. Um, Councillor, as you'll recall that um, as part of the 1920 budget, um, Council was advised by the New South Wales State Government that there had been changes made um, effectively to the way that councils would be required in future um, to pay for the cost, the additional cost of workers' compensation um, for volunteers, um, specifically within the RFS and the SES. Um, that's, had, that's added a significant cost um, to not only our budget, but council statewide's budget. Um, last year, the state government came to the party and they covered the increase as a one-off. They, as a result of COVID, this financial year, the 2021 financial year, have also made uh, the, um, the commitment to cover that one-off cost. So, Councillor, you've got a $15,000 increase there in Fire and Rescue, a $21,000 increase in the SES contribution, a $282,000 increase in the Rural Fire Service contribution. That is all offset against an increase in the emergency services levy grant of $318,000. So whilst council is very um, pleased and certainly um, very happy that the state government has made that commitment now uh, for the second year in a row, um, where I would be cautious in providing any further advice around that council is that that commitment does not extend beyond the 2021 financial year. Um, that beyond this current financial year, that is an additional cost that we will need to find not only in our annual budget, but our four year delivery program and in the long term in our long term financial plan as well. Mm. All right, thanks, Mr. Mooney. That's, um, yeah, that's quite significant, isn't it, in the long term? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Councillor Whipper, and it started a number of years ago, and I think you'll remember when we wouldn't pay it. <laughs> yeah. Which we did. Um, Councillor Yeah, just on the increase in our insurance premiums, I think the only thing that we've been mentioned by staff is the payout of the uh, RRC fire insurance claim. Is there any other claims that we're not aware of by the RRC fire? Um, I'll pass this through to Mr Paul. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Good councillor, can't specifically answer that in terms of, I mean, we have, you know, minor traffic incidents where vehicles are damaged and those sorts of things. Are there any other major claims? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, as Mr. Mooney said, this increase in our insurances has got nothing to do, well, I won't say nothing, has, has very little to do with council's claims history. It's to do with a hardening insurance market. That's the reality. We're in a very in a, an insurance market that's getting harder all the time because of what's happening in, in global pandemics and catastrophes and whatever else. The insurance market's hard. So everybody around the world, the, the underwriters are basically taking their pound of flesh and everybody around the world is going to pay more for their insurance. So what's our total premium for that insurance? I can't tell you off the top of my head, Councillor. If you could let me know, it'll be fine. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we'll take that on notice. Councillor Andrews. Uh, Councillor Andrews has a question. Councillor Andrews. Thank, thank you, Mr Mayor and Mr Mooney. Thank you. Just on page 20, 22 of the um, it's headed capital budget review statement, third from the bottom, other structures. I'm just interested in putting on sports field irrigation. Is that an improvement to the existing system or can someone explain or take it on notice? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. That is an improvement on the existing sports field irrigation. <clears throat> From what I understand, um, there are some significant gaps within the irrigation system that we have at Mitagong, which leaves, um, you know, sorry, Councillor Andrews, um, I'll start that again. So from my understanding is that the existing irrigation um, leaves a number of areas um, or doesn't reach a number of areas on the field there. So the work that we're intending on doing there is to ensure that there is um, complete saturation of the field. Um, and that's a project that our um, open space and building maintenance team is um, looking at delivering on in this current financial year. A good thing, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. And Councillor Scandrick. And then Councillor 
Uh, just quickly, yes, above that, Mr. Mayor, uh, the, the Mossvale Library refurbishment, 108,000. That's good to see that uh, uh, in conjunction with the Civic Centre that uh, we're going to get uh, a new bright uh, Mossvale Library. So that's great for uh, the area. Thank you. Yes, you, it's going to be a bigger, bigger library than the one that was previously there and uh, much more modern facilities within it. Uh, just before you go to, I, you, I go to you, Council Scandra, uh, I'm going to approach staff and ask that we have a briefing session, councillors, in relation to outfitting the administration area that it, at this stage is unfunded. Uh, that's been constructed within the council, uh, the second story of the Civic Centre. Uh, the whole aim is to leave it there until a future date to, um, to outfit it for a future administration. But I believe we should be looking at it uh, while we've got everybody on board and on site. So. It hasn't been budgeted for, so it won't be a surprise when it uh, when I ask staff to give us a briefing on how much could be it could cost to get that done all in one hit. Councillor Scandrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, page eleven, Mr. Mooney. The performance improvement order in it's an expenditure adjustment of seventy eight five hundred. Um, that's the uh, recent um, uh, state government directive. Um, my recollection is it was estimated to be about 38,000. Could you comment on that, please? Through you, Mr. Mayor, there was two components yeah. of that. Um, Mr. Paul, are you happy for me? Yeah. There were two components of that, um, Councillor. Um, there was firstly an advisor, and the advisor was the $38,500. There was also an aspect of the performance order which um, directed Council to undertake mediation. Um, the cost related to that particular component of the diet of the order is forty thousand um, dollars. Hence, the reason why um, the adjustment in front of you today, Councillor, is seventy-eight thousand five hundred. And Mr. Benny, are there any other costs such as the hire of the rooms at uh, Mossvale Services Club and um, bringing in the local government person and all that sort of thing? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Correct. There is. There are additional costs in relation to both. Hall hire or room hire, and also bringing in um, other um, individuals, trainers, um, to assist in that process. At this stage, um, we've taken an approach where we are um, charging that against the existing councillor's expense budget. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. All right, no further questions, councillors. The recommendation uh, on page 10 is somebody uh, uh, moved Councillor Nelson, second to Councillor McLaughlin. <coughs> is there any further discussion? And I'll put the recommendation all in favour, please raise your hand. Carry unanimously. And we move on to page 49, 6.3. Quarterly progress report on the operational plan. And I'll ask that uh, with regard to introduce this please. Through the chair, good morning, councillors. The purpose of this report is to provide the committee with an overview of council's progress towards delivering the annual operational plan for 2021. This is the first report for the financial year. Um, you'll be aware that the operational plan contains 204 projects, programs, and activities. Um, attachment one to this report provides an exception report um, and provides an overview of the key achievements against the operational plan and also outlines areas that need further attention or have been placed on hold. You will see on page 54 that 98.5% of annual deliverables were on track, 1% were on hold and 0.5% were delayed. You'll also note in attachment one that we have outlined key achievements in bushfire recovery and also council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic as well as highlights against um, the key themes of the strategic plan. Attachment two of this report provides uh, an overview of all major capital works projects with a greater value of $5 million. Happy to take any questions. 
councillors, questions? It is a fairly detailed report when you start reading it. And Councillor Turlin has a question. Um, Councillor uh, Councillor Turlin, and then Councillor McGoughlin. Yeah, two questions, Civic Centre and Station Street. The first one on the Civic Centre, has there been any major variations to date that we should be aware of on the Civic Centre? Uh, through the DM to Ms Lickard or Mr Moody? No, I'm happy to speak to that. No, Councillor Tell. Look, as far as I'm concerned, with you, Councillor Turland, I am chasing it up on a regular basis to make sure we're on track. Uh, and I've been assured every time I ask the question, it's a little bit behind because of the rain that we had and the problem initially with the supplier of the steel. Um, but my understanding is that the roof will be going on uh, next week or the commencement of it. And that's when you'll really start to see the, uh, the effects. And the second question I've got, is on the Station Street upgrade, you've got Wattle Street car park in there. Why has it got anything to do with the Station Street upgrade? Uh, well, I believe in one way it has a great deal to do with it, but um, I'll ask Mr. Paul or Mr. Moon to answer that, whoever wishes. Well, Councillor, I guess it's a comment in respect that um, additional car parking within the CBD, so Kirkham Road and the Wattle Lane car park extension are relevant to the Station Street project in that it's part of the strategy to provide additional car parking within the CBD apparel. And that was one reason why you pushed for the purchase of the land, I believe, Councillor Tell. You're on mute, Councillor Tell. You're on mute, Councillor Turlin. You're on mute, Councillor Turlin. It was never on any, any documents in relation to Station Street. You bought this in as you think it should be. It is not on any documents to do with Station Street at all. Pretty, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councillor, it's, it's, it's an update report. It's, it's, it's something that a comment. staff member has included. Um, there is nothing more on towards than other than a staff member has included that comment as part of the update to show that we are making progress within the CBD, albeit there continues to be frustration within the organisation around Station Street, the factors that are outside our control, but we are still making progress within some work programs within the CBD. It, we, we take your comment on board, Councillor, and we'll make sure that any reference to Wattle Street um, car park in the future won't be included in the Station Street com, um, section. Thank you. So I am correct in saying it has nothing to do with Station Street. I think that's a moot point, Councillor. No, that's your opinion, Mr. Mayor, and it has nothing to do. It's not in the budget, Mr. Mayor. You know it's not there. It's in no documents at all. Thank you, Councillor. Week me. I will leave it as a moot point. Well, I just make it. Councillor, Mr. Paul. I just made a comment. I've just been advised that the additional car parking in the Wattle Lane car park is actually mentioned in the deep dive review from Infrastructure New South Wales as part of the overall solution for Barrett. Uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, look, just, just going to Station Street again, um, you know, people complain about council being slow. How long have we waited for an MOU on this? I mean, it, it indicates that it's, uh, in, uh, it's, it's near, nearly there, but we've waited for what, how many years on this? I mean, it's just been incredible. Do we need to put some more pressure on our, our, our local state politicians or uh, are, are they going to hold us up for even longer? Yeah, Councillor McLaughlin, I arranged a meeting last week before last with uh, Minister Tool to discuss it. It had to be postponed, which was unfortunate. The, the, I've asked that another meeting date be uh, obtained, and of my understanding, that is now the 3rd of December, uh, with Minister Tool to discuss the... Uh, uh, as you rightly, correctly pointed out, the hold up on the MOU. This will be the 
second ministerial visit to try and push this along. And the level of frustration from me uh, and from staff and from all other councillors in general, or most councillors in general, is, is getting just ridiculous. Yeah. So, okay. Whatever you say, Councillor McLaughlin, I'll probably support. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look, I'm pleased to hear that, Mr. Mayor, that we're still putting pressure on because the community are just thinking this is never, ever going to happen. And, and it's not our fault. The state government just keeps, you know, <laughs> delaying, delaying and not, not letting us get on with things. OK, well, thanks for that. Appreciate it. OK, thanks, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, any other comments to uh, 6.3? Then I'll look for a recommendation from Councillor Gopalan and secondly, Councillor Nelson. I'll put the recommendation all in favour, please raise your card. So that's carried unanimously. Oh, Councillor Turland is not present. Uh, so Councillor Turland has somehow dropped out of the, uh, out of the loop. We go on to page oh, six points. He's back. Uh, six, uh, 66. 6.4 Mostar Wall Memorial Aquatic Centre Accessible Change Facility proposal. I'll ask um, Mr Mooney to introduce it. Uh, thank you and through you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, this brings us to the fourth and final report of today's um, business paper. Um, the purpose of this report is to seek council support to commence the design investigation. Good job. Good job. Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll start again, councillors. <laughs> The purpose of this report is to seek council support to commence the design investigation and detail costings for the construction of an inclusive adult change facilities at the Mossvale War Memorial Aquatic Centre. Councillors, you'll recall that the Mossvale Memorial Aquatic Centre was officially opened and in operation from November 2013. At the time, um, the centre was built um, to ensure that it met the needs of the broader community and was also built to ensure that it met the National Construction Code standards. Um, since 2019, councillors, um, an updated code has been prepared and now requires the inclusion of accessible adult change facilities to be included in certain classes of public buildings. Um, the types of public buildings include um, aquatic centres such as the Mossvale Aquatic Centre. Councillors, at present, the centre currently has no facilities for patrons with high support needs. This includes people with Acquired brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, multiple sclerosis, and cerebral palsy, and spina bifida, and motor neurone disease, as well as many other people with debilitating, debilitating, sorry, their counsellors, disabilities. Um, counsellors, that brings us to the main um, content of the report. We've received a number of requests um, through the public uh, for council to give serious consideration for the inclusion of an accessible adult change facility at the centre. Um, an accessible adult change facility is a toilet and change facility that caters for users with my needs, as I've just outlined. In these cases, they require additional space, assistance and specialised equipment to allow them to use toilet safety, safely, comfortably, and most importantly, with dignity. Um, the inclusion of an accessible adult change facility built and accredited to um, standards, including changing places standards, would be achieved um, if council was um, of the mind to support this proposal, um, would be achieved by extending the existing building structure to accommodate an adult size change table, ceiling hoist, a um, purpose built um, and fit for purpose toilet, a privacy screen and additional circulation space to meet the needs of carers and, and the um, people using the facility. Um, Council is subject to um, the provision of your formal support at today's meeting. Um, that will then allow council officers to commence um, the scoping and the planning around this particular project, um, which would then allow us to advance a project to a complete set of detailed design drawings and specifications. This would then allow us to prepare high level estimates through a probable opinion of costs. Um, council is what we're not necessarily seeking today is a budget allocation. Uh, what we are seeking is a, um, 
a um, support um, for us to now take this project beyond um, just being a, a community request to build that into our new project management system, which will allow us to go through the relevant detail of relevant design and scoping stages, which would then permit us to come back to you with um, both a accurate or, or a realistic um, cost estimate and also a realistic time frame um, for the delivery of the project. Um, at that note, I'll, I'll leave that um, for any questions that you may have, councillors. Uh, Councillor Whipper, Councillor Scandrick, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Whipper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'd just like to um, ask a question, but I'd also like to flag that um, I'd be happy to move this motion because I do want to speak to it in a little more detail. But my question is in relation to the commencement of the design work, um, do we have a, a time frame as to when that design um, uh, work may commence? I note that um, uh, any allocation of money is contingent on um, a review in the budget of next year. And um, that I think um, we need to fast track this as much as possible. So I'm looking for some comfort from the fact that this design work will start before budget deliberations next year. Who are you, Mr. Mayor? And um, Councillor, I, I recognise that and recognise urgency. Um, probably going to explain that we're actually well into or, or just about to start with budget deliberations. We're in November now. Um, yeah. Any design work for it to actually fit into our 21 22 program of work, so the, the next year's budget is going to have to happen uh, pretty quickly. It's going to have to happen within the next two to three months. We'll be locking in um, capital expenditure budgets for consideration with council if for March, April. Um, so subject to council support here, um, we'll certainly, um, you know, certainly look to progress um, with haste with getting that um, design done. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Scandrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, uh, of course, last term, a number of us, uh, Councillor Whipper, Councillor Turner, as I recall, uh, were particularly interested in the provision of these sort of services. So uh, I'll be seconding your motion, Councillor Whipper. I think, yes, it'd be really good if we could uh, strengthen that, that, uh, that, that timeline be, uh, uh, well, we strive for that timeline, Councillor Whipper, yeah. on, on the design. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure where the question was. Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, look, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mooney, um, look, I understand and, and I will be supporting this, but it beggars belief that in 2013, we didn't already know that we were going to have people in the community with disabilities, with motor neuro, um, all those types of things. From, well, I'm wondering why we had to wait for a building code to push us in this direction. Was the reason of cost uh, initially? Because this will cost a lot more than than actually building it, um, you know, from the start to, to retrofit something is always more expensive. Um, it, it, the reason that this wasn't done initially was... Um, due to the cost, can, do you think that was the reason? Uh, we're moving down this track, which I think is a good way, but uh, surely in future, you know, we take the needs of the community on board before, uh, before anything else, I would have thought. Uh, I think the, uh, there was a directive given to the staff that the building was not to cost any more than 9.5 million or right. so. Right, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, that's, that's a shame that we don't, anyway, I'll take that as a, the answer. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Nelson and uh, Councillor Jill. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, yes, all the councillors did an inspection and had a briefing session uh, on this issue. Uh, so we're all uh, in favour of it. Uh, Mr. Mayor uh, and uh, you're right, there's a long story on the cost issues associated with this development. But I, I'd be seeking, Councillor Whipper wants to discuss it uh, in more depth, but I'd be looking for a number three that Council make representation to our federal and state ministers uh, seeking possible grant funding or, or seeking possible funding towards uh, this facility. We might, we might uh, strike some some gold there, Mr. Mayor. So uh, perhaps 
uh, we could word something up that uh, council make representation to its, uh, maybe it's a state, a state one, then make it state, or if it's both, make it both uh, uh, members, both uh, state and federal members. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Nelson. And a uh, question from Councillor Turley. Well, first question is, it, the, the cost was not 9.2, it ended up at 10.2, a million dollars over budget. So there was variations and it could have been fixed during the process. Information under the Discrimination Act, under the Disability Services Act clearly shows that this wasn't catered for in earlier, earlier stages. So it's just been missed by the architect who was also the builder and the project manager. So he had his, a lot of information and he should have got it right the first time. As I said, it cost us a million dollars over our budget and all the ordinances are out there already. None have changed. Thank you, Councillor Turlin. So we have a motion moved by Councillor Whipper, seconded by Councillor Scandrick. And you want to, uh, I'll let you speak to Councillor Whipper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I, I'm pretty certain that all councillors support this. And um, I note in the report that we built to the existing codes, but there's something, a difference between uh, building to existing codes and to um, compassion and understanding of the needs of people with a disability. Um, this came, uh, we know, and I know that other councillors have raised the concerns before about some of the issues around the aquatic centre and the, um, the obstacles for people with um, disability. But th this came to my attention very directly from a woman who has a 17 year old daughter who um, is forced uh, with the lack of a, an adult change table is forced to transfer that um, 17 year old girl from a chair, put her on the floor and then um, to, um, to um, dress her and prepare her for swimming. And uh, really, there's no dignity at all in that, councillors. And these are the things that I don't know if anybody's had experience with um, people that are, in, the, that are not mobile and just the, the sheer effort that's taken in transferring those people. I've heard that that woman doesn't um, frequent the aquatic centre as much these days. And when she does, she's forced to take a picnic table to put her adult or almost adult daughter with a disability on to actually change her. Um, that's just not good enough, councillors, really not good enough. The other thing that was pointed out to me is that um, the existing pool chair doesn't cater for people um, with high postural support needs. And I think that if we're doing this, and I appreciate the effort of staff and the, the, um, the acceptance that we do need to provide these services for everybody. But what I'd suggest is that during the process of um, you know, doing these designs, somebody might talk to um, not only an occupational therapist who works with people with disabilities, but also to some of those people who um, are confronted with this every day of their life. I think it would be, and um, I can certainly assist in putting people in touch with those users um, so that we can know what the needs are because me, building to a code is one thing, but building to the needs of those people who experience every day, I think is something far different. Um, so I, I'm happy to support this. I'd like, I take on board Councillor Nelson's suggestion I think that we could include that point three. If there is any funding available, then why not go for it? Because if we can fast track this uh, ASAP, I think uh, the better it'll be for the community and it'll make it more accessible and extend some uh, show of dignity for these people in our community that are doing it tough. Thank you, councillors. Yeah, point taken, councillor Whipper, every funding opportunity. Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I've got something here that might assist. Uh, 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 that uh, I've got that council make representation to its local, state, and federal members. Yeah, state, state, and federal local members. Federal local members um, advising them of the project. and seeking any possible financial assistance 
to move the project forward. Uh, if the staff have got anything that might uh, enhance that, I'd appreciate it. No, I think you've covered it. Uh, maybe point four, take on Councillor Whipper's comment that uh, the council liaise with the user groups. Stakeholders, Mr. Mayor, I think, you know, yeah. Um, and, um, and um, you know, um, um, I, I say occupational therapists because they work very closely with the needs of uh, people with a disability and they, uh, they could probably advise on the needs, but the stakeholder group is critically important. So I think it's a good point to put in there. Okay, the council state, do you want to put in an occupational therapist or that would be... Yeah, and, 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 and a qualified occupational therapist to assist with in, in design of the, um, you know, the, um, the facility, yeah. How about requirements? Yeah, yeah, okay, that sounds good, yeah. Requirements for the facility. All right, well, there seems to be... I was over there on Saturday and I think all councils received a invitation for Ian Thorpe's visit. Um, and I was talking to the Andrew over there on the, on Saturday in relation to this council of Whipper. And the, yes, they're looking toward getting it, uh, to getting it on the ground and built or built and then on the ground, so. Yeah, that's good, Mr. Mayor. And I'm sure everybody, you know, if, if, if all we have to yeah. do is go and watch how um, these people are forced um, into a situation like that. And I, I have no doubt the whole community would be behind us on this one. All right, thank you. Is there any further comment? And I've put the recommendation all in favour. Please raise your card. All against, carried unanimously. Well, that concludes the business councils. Can I, um, when we go offline councils, can I ask you just to stay there for two seconds. So uh, thank you for the members of the community who watched the Finance Committee and uh, we bid you a, a good morning. So um, we...